Hello, this is Derek here and I'm at the Torg Waterfall in Killarney National Park a few kilometres south of Killarney in County Kerry. In this video I'm showing you how to take pictures incorporating water effects in waterfalls, rivers and streams. So let's start. I've moved to a location upstream of Torque Waterfall, but there's another waterfall down there. There's also a movement of water which is perfect for our video. Here is also not as crowded as Torque Waterfall was. The things you need are obviously a DSLR camera and lens. I also use this button to, to remotely control taking of pictures. There are some remote controllers out there that can be wired to a camera, but with these there is the possibility of introducing camera shake. I also have a polarizing filter which just screws onto the lens. I will discuss what that does later in this video. And of course you'll need a tripod. I will now take several pictures of the waterfall at varying shutter speeds to demonstrate the effect. Here's a series of pictures I took of the waterfall, starting off with a fast shutter speed. Each picture has a shutter speed slower than the one before it. You will notice that in the beginning, with a fast shutter speed, the drops are frozen in mid-air. As the shutter speeds get slower, the water starts to transition from that frozen appearance to something more blurry and smooth, and a lot of the detail in the water surface being lost. A shutter speed of about 4 seconds would be typical for a waterfall of this size, but the volume of water as well as the height and freefall height are often factors in determining an appropriate shutter speed. I will now discuss other types of pictures you can get. I have moved upstream to demonstrate the effect of varying the shutter speeds on the stream. Here's a series of pictures I took uh, of part of a stream. Once again we start off with a fast shutter speed and each picture has a shutter speed slower than the one before it. You will notice that the first picture with the fastest shutter speed has the appearance of being frozen in time and then as the shutter speeds get slower the water takes on a smoother milkier appearance and more of the detail of the water surface gets lost. I will now show what effect the polarizing filter has on reflecting light on water. If I hold the filter up to the camera and then rotate it, you should notice what happens to the glare from the water surface. Okay, I'm now going to put the filter onto the DSLR camera and then take a few pictures with it. Here are two pictures I took of part of a stream, one using a polarizing filter and the other without. You should see with the picture on the right there isn't a glare from the water surface, unlike the one on the left. This is what the polarizing filter does, suppresses the glare from the water surface as has happened here. A polarizing filter works best when you shoot at 90 degrees to the sun. That said, there is a vast majority of situations where the subject matter will not be at this optimal angle. The polarizing filter will still do its job almost as good. Shooting in a wooded area like where I am now is one more thing to consider when setting up a camera to take pictures. Obviously the denser the forest is, the less light that will be getting through, so you will need to widen your aperture, lengthen your shutter speed, or increase your ISO values to compensate for the light levels being a bit lower than they would be in daylight. 
On the flip side, sometimes the trees will have the effect of limiting the harshness of the light when it's midday and there's no cloud cover to thr throttle down the sun. This concludes my presentation on photographing waterfalls, rivers and streams. If you did enjoy this video, be sure to leave a like, comment and subscribe. And also hit the bell notification icon so you'll know as soon as I upload any more videos. And until next time, I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.